Hi there, everyone. So I think that I've discovered a bug with BLHeli32. And before we jump into the video and I take you through my test methodology, show you the results and conclusions, I want to take a moment to put everyone's mind at rest. There is no reason to think that this bug affects the safety of any of our quads, and we've probably been flying with it for years and never known about it. So there's absolutely no need to worry. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More about them later. This video started out as a product review and an opportunity to show you a new piece of motor test equipment that I've been working on for quite some time. The product is this. It is the new KM55 amp ESC from Skystars. And it's a 20 by 20 M3 mount ESC, supports up to 6S LiPo voltage and has a massive 55 amp current rating. And there are two versions of this ESC, one that comes with BL Heli 32 and this one, which comes with AM32 as standard. And as far as I'm aware, it's one of the first ESCs that's commercially available with AM32 on it from the factory. And I wanted to put this ESC through a real torture test to see how good it was and how robust it was. And I thought that a good way to do that was to have it drive my new test stand, which is an inertial dynamometer for drone motors. For those of you who are familiar with inertial dynamometers for car and motorbike engine testing, then this one works very much the same way. If you're not familiar with inertial dynamometer technology, let me take you through this inertial dyno and explain how it works. Inertial dynamometers are actually quite common. They're normally used for testing car and motorbike engines, particularly for racing and other applications where performance is really critical. They provide really detailed information about the engine's performance across an RPM range, and they give you parameters like the torque of the engine, the power and the efficiency across that RPM range. An inertial dyno consists of a large flywheel coupled to the motor. What we do is we command the motor to accelerate the flywheel as fast as it can and we measure the RPM of the motor and the torque that it's applying to the flywheel as the system accelerates. Here is a photo of my inertial dynamometer. It's based on the Taito Robotics 1585 thrust test stand that I've been using for previous testing, and I've combined it with this precisely turned flywheel here. The flywheel is connected to the motor, which is driven by the ESC, and we have two load cells on the test stand that measure the torque that the motor is applying onto the flywheel during the test. At the same time, the thrust stand is measuring the voltage and the current that's being applied to the ESC so that we can get a measure of the efficiency of the motor as well. One of the most important parts of any inertial dynamometer is the flywheel. And the flywheel has to be very well balanced and have a very precisely known moment of inertia to help with the calculation of torque and power of the motor. I've had a number of flywheels custom machined for this inertial dynamometer. Here's one here. And this would not have been possible without the very generous support of my patrons on Patreon. So thank you to them. And if you'd like to join that exclusive group, then there are links down in the video description. Please check it out. You can join from just a few dollars a month and I'd sure appreciate it. I've got flywheels from 20 kilogram millimeter squared all the way up to 200 kilogram millimeter squared. And this allows me to test motors of a range of sizes and get the kind of graphs that I'm gonna talk about in the rest of this video. First, let me show you an example dyno run and then we'll dive into the data from all of my testing. So let's take a look at an example dyno run now. You might hear other people call this a dyno pull as well. Looking at the RPM on the orange line, we start at a modest RPM, about 17,500 RPM, and then we command the motor to a high throttle position. In this case, I think it was 80% throttle. And the motor then accelerates the flywheel all the way from 17,500 RPM up to 30,000 RPM. 
If we look at the torque that the motor is applying to the flywheel on the blue line, we can see the torque starts out very low, and then when we command the motor to the high throttle position, we get this big spike of torque up to a peak, and then the torque decays as the motor accelerates and the RPM increases, and eventually, if we were to keep going, the torque would trend to zero at the maximum speed of the motor. The starting RPM and test throttle are very important settings for dyno runs. BLDC motors can draw enormous amounts of current under load at low RPM, and we're talking more than 100 amps for a typical 5-inch motor, and that is plenty to burn windings and blow ESCs. I found that for my testing, if I started the pull at about 17,500 RPM and used 80% throttle, that limited the peak current to about 60 amps, which was enough to get the motors pretty hot, but not at risk of burning anything out. For lower RPM runs, I also found that 5,000 RPM and 60% throttle also worked with a peak current of about 60 amps. Future comparisons are always going to be done with the same dyno settings, and provided that the test methodology is the same, you can compare across different motors, even if you're not using 100% throttle. At the start of the video, I said that the inertial dyno was a bit of a torture test for ESCs. So I want to take a moment now to remember those ESCs that were sacrificed in the pursuit of these settings. All good so far, we have the inertial dyno working the way that we want it to. But here's where things get somewhat weird. Here's a graph comparing torque versus RPM for BL Heli 32 and AM32 on the same motor, it's a Zing 2 1855kV, and the same settings, 24k PWM and medium timing, which is 16 degrees on BL Heli 32 and 15 degrees on AM32. BL Heli 32 has this really strange wiggly torque versus RPM curve all the way from 5,000 RPM up to, I guess you could say maybe 20,000 RPM. And compare that to AM32, which has this beautifully smooth torque curve. It just goes up, it peaks at just above 10,000 RPM, and then it's smooth all the way to 25,000. I repeated this test two or three times and got quite consistent results, but the wiggle looks different every time. And it's also different depending on the settings. So here is BL Heli 32 versus AM32, this time with variable PWM, 24K to buy RPM on medium timing. And again, we have a wiggle from BL Heli 32. It's a different wiggle to the first time. And AM32 is smooth, peak, and then smooth to 25,000. It's also not particularly affected by timing. Here we have 24K to buy RPM on the PWM, 23 degree timing on BL Heli 32 and AM32. And again, we have this wiggly curve for BL Heli 32 up to about 15,000 RPM, and then it's sort of smoothed out. And AM32 absolutely rock solid, up, peak, and then smooth down to 25,000. I wondered if it might be the ESC, so I tested on another ESC. This is a Hollybro Teco 32, and exactly the same thing is happening. We're getting these weird peaks and troughs in the torque curve before somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 RPM, everything smooths out. So the issue clearly affects multiple different BL Heli 32 ESCs. So that brings us to the conclusions and what do we do next? Well, I'm going to be raising a bug report on this issue on the BL Heli 32 GitHub to make sure that it's brought to the attention of the devs and hopefully they can dig into it and find out whether there's uh, something that can be done to improve the performance. Obviously, we like to see a smooth torque RPM curve across the whole RPM range and AM32 seems to deliver that really, really well. 
and BL Heli 32 seems to be struggling a bit below about 15,000 RPM or so. Hopefully there's something that can be done to, to resolve that quickly. If you want to stay up to date on this issue, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to make a follow-up video when I have more information um, and keep everyone informed about the progress of this, this little snag. But hopefully it's going to be relatively easy to resolve. And as I said at the top of the video, I don't think there's any reason to be worried. It's not safety critical. Um, and it's just really a performance issue, a way that perhaps BL Heli 32 can be improved to work even better on our drones. So um, hopefully that's, that's what's going to happen. So what about this KM55 Amp ESC? Well, as you can see, it survived my torture testing on the inertial dyno no problem, which is really good going and speaks to the quality of the ESC. You can see that it's got this aluminium heat spreader on top that's bonded with thermal epoxy to the FETs, that's going to make sure they stay nice and cool, even under high current load. And on the back, I don't know if you can see here, but all of the MCUs and control electronics are on a separate daughter board. And this is really good because it provides the option to have additional ground planes between the power electronics on the FETs for the ESC and the control electronics on this daughter board. And that just helps reduce the likelihood that any interference from the power electronics is going to affect the operation of the control of the ESC and just makes it that much more reliable. There are a few other nice features that I like about this ESC. It has all of the pads broken out so you can direct solder or you can connect to it using a plug and it's got separate pads for a capacitor on the back as well which is really nice to see. All in all it looks to be a very well put together ESC with a lot of useful features and is pretty ideal for a 20 by 20 5 inch freestyle build or racing build and it runs AM32 which is great I mean it's supporting that open source project and from what we've seen today AM32 looks to be the ESC firmware to beat right now so you can't really go wrong with that. If you're looking to pick one up I'll put some links down in the video description. I hope that you enjoyed the video if you want to support more work like this then I have a Patreon, as I mentioned earlier, and also I'm raising money for some new test equipment right now, um, a more fully featured professional thrust test stand, um, and I'm doing that through my Buy Me A Coffee. So if you don't feel able to sign up for the Patreon, but you do feel able to throw a few bucks my way to support the purchase of that test equipment, then there's a link to that down in the video description as well. Now it's time to hear a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. Whether you're looking to level up your technical skills or unleash your creative side, either as part of your career progression or to get more out of your hobby, Skillshare is bound to have a class that's just perfect for you. I've been enjoying this video on Photo Essentials by Justin Bridges. It's been helping me to decide what lenses I need to buy for the cameras that I use to record these videos for you guys. If you have a similar project that you think Skillshare might be able to provide some information to help with, then the first thousand people to use the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can see if it works for you. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.